Okay, hello class. Um, I'm making this video because I am not there in person. So we're gonna go over, this is your first worksheet. You have two worksheet, worksheets today. <clears throat> this is the first one, so this video will go with the first worksheet. Uh, the name of the worksheet is Standard Form to Slope Intercept Form. Standard Form to Slope Intercept Form. Uh, once again, the way to turn this in is simply to <clears throat> uh, send it to Notability, uh, do your work on there, and then share it through Neo that way, or take a screenshot of it. Uh, the other way is to uh, leave it on your screen, do the work on a separate sheet of paper, take a photo of that separate sheet of paper, submit it through Neo, uh, or finally you could print it out do your work on the printed out piece of paper, take a picture of that, and submit it through Neo. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about how to change equations from standard form to slope-intercept form. So far, the only types of linear equations we've really looked at are ones that are in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. Now, <clears throat> um, these ones are not looking like y equals mx plus b. In y equals mx plus b, there's a couple of things you need to know. First off, y is all by itself, okay? So y is isolated. Second, the x term is next to the equal sign. So the x term is next to the equal sign. And just so you know, I know I'm gonna make some mistakes as I go through this uh, or some blips with notability. I'm gonna do this all in one take, so just bear with me. So be as close to being live in class as we can get, except that you can't ask me questions just now. So <clears throat> that's the second thing, and then third, the y-intercept, or b, is out here to the right. So there's the y-intercept. And so our goal is to take these other equations, which are in what's called standard form. So standard form, <clears throat> and change them into slope-intercept form. So standard form simply is having x and y on the same side together. And the constant or the regular number all by itself over on the right. <clears throat> the other thing about standard form, and this isn't important this year, I'm just going to tell you anyway, uh, but A and B in standard form can't be fractions or, or decimals. They need to be integers. Okay? So they can't be fractions or decimals. Actually, C either. <clears throat> uh, so... True standard form, you won't have fractions or decimals there, but it doesn't matter. The process is going to be the same <clears throat> whether those are integers um, or fractions or not. All of the ones we're dealing with today are going to be integers. So there we go, standard form. This is an example of an equation in standard form, and we are going to change it into slope-intercept form. So the biggest key with all of this is that y is isolated. And if you just focus on that fact, the rest of it kind of takes care of itself. <clears throat> I'm going to write some steps down, although steps aren't always the best way to do math. But I'm going to write some steps um, and see if you can follow along with these steps. So step one, if we're going to use number one as our example, this is right off of your homework, right off your worksheet, so you should write this down. <clears throat> so step one is to move the x term from the left to the right, okay? Move the x term from the left to the right, and I'll explain how to do that. We've done something similar to that earlier this year. So, So move it to the right side of the equal sign. Uh, <clears throat> now, one thing with the video is feel free because it's going to take a little bit of time for me to write things. If you want to do, whoop, just skip forward as I'm writing uh, five seconds. Uh, just hit the little, I think, right arrow or 
a little fast forward thing there on YouTube, and it should work out all right. Uh, but we're going to move the x term to the right side of the equal sign. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're just going to add or subtract it, depending on if it's positive or negative. Uh, most of these, I think, are going to be, they're all positive, so we're going to subtract it to the other side. Uh, but I'm going to finish writing in here by, by adding or subtracting. So we're going to move the x term to the right side of the equals <clears throat> equal sign by adding or subtracting. So let's go see. Up here, number one's our example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. So minus 3x, minus 3x. And again, my goal here is to isolate y. So I'm just going to get rid of everything that's on the left-hand side of the equal sign that's, you know, that's with y. So I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. It's going to make that turn into 0, so it's gone. We're left with 4y equals. Now, 8 and negative 3x are not like terms, so they will not add together, so we put them next to each other. And if you remember what is <clears throat> the slope-intercept form, you'll remember that we actually want the x term closer to the equal sign than the constant. We don't. We want that one out here to the right. So we're going to move that negative 3x and put it in. See, the x term is next to the equal sign right there. <clears throat> So I'm going to move that negative 3x right in front of the 8. And the one trick to this is that if this is a positive 8, we need to write it as plus 8. Since those weren't able to add together, we uh, just put them next to each other like that. It's a positive 8, so we write plus 8. If it had been a negative 8, we would have written minus 8. Um, okay, so that's step one. Step one is to move the x term from the left side to the right side by adding or subtracting. Step two... Okay, step two here is to get rid of the number next to y. So now take a look at this one. How would we do that? What number is next to y and what's the math operation there? So the four is multiplying to the y. So you know about solving equations. If you want to get rid of a four that's multiplying, you do the inverse operation, which is to divide. So you're going to divide by four on both sides. <clears throat> so we're going to write this down in our step. Step two is to get rid of, so coefficient is the official name of it, but we're just going to say get rid of the number next to y by dividing. So that's step two. Let's go take a look over here. <clears throat> So we're, and this is going to be a slightly more involved step. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 here. And the reason this is more involved is because of the right side of the equation. On the left, not so bad. 4 divided by 4 is gone. It makes 1y. So we just have y equals. But on the right side, this is where you have a little extra work. The 4 goes into 8, so that looks wonderful. But you technically have to divide the 4 into both terms. You have to divide it into this one and into this one. So what's that end up looking like? Well, negative 3 divided by 4 is not going to come out to a whole number or an integer, so we just leave it as a fraction. So just leave it as negative 3 over 4. So we're going to write it like this, negative 3 fourths, and then the x just goes right next to it. So y equals negative 3 fourths x, and that's going to end up being our slope. And then with the plus 8, so plus 8 divided by 4 ends up being plus 2. So, and there is our equation in slope-intercept form. We are done. We've got y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. Our slope is negative 3 fourths. Our 2, um, or our, our y-intercept is 2. And there it is in y equals mx plus b form. That's the whole process. I'm going to do one last example just to kind of show you uh, what to do. And <clears throat> then we'll... Uh, We'll go. Uh, let you go ahead and do the rest of this on your own. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and go with number two because this is one of the trickier ones. We're going to have lots of fractions here. So again, step one, I'm going to move the x term from the left to the right. We get 3y equals 
negative 10x. And again, it's a positive 2, so I'm going to write plus 2. Step 2 is to divide both sides by 3. goes here and here. I'm going to end up with y equals. And then again, the 3 is going to go into both of these. Some people call this the butterfly. Um, negative 10 over 3. And you can leave this as an improper fraction. That's okay. It doesn't go in evenly, so you just leave it as a fraction. Negative 10 over 3x. Now, it doesn't go into the 2 either this time, so we're just going to leave that as 2 thirds. And there is your answer. That's all there is to it. Two steps for all of these on this whole worksheet, and uh, should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and say that for period one, if you're in my period one class, my college prep class, you guys get to do just the odds, just the odds. If you're in my periods five or six class, you're going to be very thankful that you get to do all of them, all of them.